All right, he's here. He's got some info. Jason Lockenfora, CBS Sports NFL Insider. What's happening, Big J? How are you? Hey, what's going on, guys? All good. Now, let's get to the coaching stuff first. Um, Chip Kelly and the Niners, seems like there's a little traction, a little momentum. You buying that? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I mean, as I reported last Sunday, that's the only one where he was really getting internal chatter. Now, there was a lot of instances of him and his agent, David Dunn, reaching out to teams and kind of trying to drum some stuff up. But, you know, the moment he got fired, there was a lot of conversation in the 49ers staff, you know, Jed York and, and – Trent Balfi and those guys about, okay, what are we doing here? Are we really going to stand pat with Tom Sula? You know, there's all these candidates out there. And that's sort of expedited it. So I'm not surprised at all that they talk. Um, and, and outside of that, San Francisco scenario, guys, I, I don't know that anything materialized mm. for him. I, I really don't at this point. I mean, these things have a way of taking turns and, and going in directions no one saw. But, but as of right now, that's probably his best bet. But even – you know, even then, it's not like they're like, we got to talk to Chip Kelly right away. And they still want to talk to Hugh Jackson and some of the, the people who were involved in the playoffs. So, you know, we'll see where that process takes them. Hey, Jason, the whole dynamic with um, going back to the Harbaugh, Balky, and York, um, mm-hmm. you know, struggle and fracture. We know that Balky aligned himself with York, which is partially why Jim Harbaugh was, you know, shown the door, which is ludicrous when in hindsight. And, and well, well, we knew it then, too. But has that eroded, that relationship between York and Balky? Is it as strong as it once was? And the guy coming in, is he going to able, is, will he be able to minimize Balky to an extent? I think it depends on who the guy is. And I think that model is a little bit fungible. But, but the reality is, you know, Trent Balky, um, you know, he, he's still in place there. I mean, they trust him with personnel. Uh, he's, he's been someone who they've been very loyal to. They feel like he's been very loyal to them. And, I don't, I don't, you know, get the sense that he lost any power out of any of this whatsoever. Um, you know, that hire, the Tom Sula hire, I mean, it's, uh, I think the Trump, Trump office gets a little too much credit and or blame that he deserves. I mean, it, it's easy to put it out there that, like, well, he's the guy making the decision. I mean, it's been Jed York and Prague a lot. They run that organization. Now, I know they claim that Prague's sort of been banished now outside of football matters. I tend to think he probably still has Jed's ear um, whenever Jed wants him to, but you know, regardless, I, I don't think that that Docky will be a play. You know, his role will be a big factor in which coach they get. I mean, they're going to have to they're going to have to sell a long term vision of how they're going to get better. And I think you go into that interview knowing that you know you're expecting for at least the next several years, Trent's picking the players. Now, there's two uh, young coordinators who have been uh, hot to trot for the head coaching position. One already had one. Uh, and Josh McDaniels, but he and Adam Gase, where do you think they respectively end up? It seems like Gase is the is the most sought-after uh, candidate right now. Could he go to Miami? I mean, look, he, he's interviewed in Cleveland where you know, they, they desperately wanted to talk to him and, and possibly hire him several years ago. So, so Jimmy Haslam finally got his audience with Adam Gase. I'm told things went um, very well. I don't know that it was like one where they like stopped the press and going to hire him right now. But certainly he's someone who will be deemed uh, for further consideration. Miami and Philadelphia have talked to him as well. He goes up to New York today. I believe he's with the Giants today. Then Marone is with them tomorrow. And that will probably end the first wave of the Giants search. I expect him to get one of these jobs. Um, if he doesn't, that would be troubling after, you know, the, the situation last year. And frankly, I don't know that it's going to be better in Chicago this year if you're thinking Matt Forte is gone for sure. Alshon Jeffrey might be gone. Jay Cutler in a contract here. Um, Martellus Bennett may be hitting the wall. So, you know, the, I, I think Adam Gates is getting one of these jobs. I can't tell you exactly which one yet, uh, but but I, within his camp, there has to be a sense of, okay, it's time to place this guy. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking to Jason Locken for usual Friday spot here on Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. Of course, Jay, big part of the NFL today. You catch him on Sundays with us on Tops and CBSSports.com, all over the radio scene. Uh, what about the Bucks? I mean, obviously there's there's <laughs> there's all sorts of issues up top. I mean, they're just they're petulant, they're impatient, they're just uh, yeah. they're sloppy. What where do they turn? And is that a job that anybody worth their salt would even take right now? You know, I, I don't I don't think it's as dire as as we might think. Um, there's going to be concerns, obviously. You're going to have to a you're wondering who am I hitching my wagon to here, and why are they firing coaches every eight months? You know, b you're wondering about the Dirk Cutter dynamic, and obviously Dirk Cutter, you know, he's going to be someone they talk to. He's going to get a lot of consideration for this job. I would not say that he has the job, uh, but but they would like to keep him in that building. So if you're a head coaching candidate and you're coming in there, 
and you want someone other than Dirk Cutter as your offensive coordinator, that, that may end up being a deal breaker. But, again, there's worse things in the world than having Dirk Cutter as your offensive coordinator, especially after he's worked with Winston for a year. I think you look at guys, and they have to fix their defense. So can you get a Sean McDermott and pair him with Dirk Cutter and hopefully McDermott fixes your defense and modernizes that a little bit? gets it out of this Tampa 2, you know, sort of marriage that, that Lovey Smith was, that's just who he is. You know what I mean? At his core, that, that's what he believes in defensively, and they want to go in a different direction. Um, I think someone to look out for, a dark horse candidate, is Dave Tobe, special teams coordinator of the Chiefs. Tobe and Dirk Cutter are very good friends. Jason Light was in Philadelphia when Dave Tobe was there. A lot of people in coaching circles, circles feel like there's a little bit of, of hardball in Tobe. And remember, you know, Harvard was a no, no, of nobody, right? He was a special teams coach under Andy Reid. Nobody had ever heard of. Uh, but he put the right staff together, and they've obviously done a brilliant job in, in Baltimore for the most part. So, you know, I think their cutter's not going anywhere, but it doesn't necessarily have to mean he's their next head coach. Yeah, Jason, let's get to some of the games this weekend, especially some of the injury issues. Marshawn Lynch and uh, Adrian Peterson, both in this wild card game, Marshawn looks like he's going to play. He had a derm- abdominal surgery. How 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 is he looking? One and two. Adrian Peterson, if he can't go or he's limited, I mean, does do the Vikings yeah. even have a chance? Look, I, I think not enough made of this Peterson thing. Um, the guy was not right last week. It's a short week. You know, you can see he was in pain. He did second half of that game. He was struggling. I think this McKinnon kid has become a, a a bigger part of their offense and that screen game, especially against that pass rush with Avery and Bennett. I think it's going to be imperative. I don't know. And, and Peterson, you know, it was tough slide to be able to run on Seattle. Even me, I don't think we'd be able to run in Seattle when you've got, you know, a quarterback who's still somewhat limited and not a lot of offensive weapons. They're going to sell out to stop the run. I, I really feel like they're going to have to screen Seattle to death, try to get the big plays that way and sustain drives that way. Uh, and, and maybe that's their best way to win. I, 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 I mean, if you're asking me to concoct scenarios here where the Vikings win, I don't know that I'd see one where Adrian Peterson rushes 30 times. I just don't think that's going to be a means to an end. I think they're going to have to score points. I mean, I can't believe I'm going to ask this question because it's still football as much as we try to, you know, soften it up a little bit. But the weather, I mean, this this seems to be a really big deal. What's the precautions being taken by the NFL and both teams here? Well, I mean, it's obviously extreme cold, and that's what the, the forecast is. We've seen game, you know, everyone talks about the ice ball and some of these things end up becoming part of the lore and legend of the NFL. We'll have to see if this game gets anywhere close to that. But, I mean, you hope players are smart, you know. You hope they layer up a little bit. You hope there's not too many guys running around with exposed skin. I, I'm guessing there will be just because that's, you know, I've seen it my whole life. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think it'll be a factor, especially with the, with the wind chill and some of the things we're talking about. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I mean, Bridgewater in particular he doesn't have huge hands. He's not, you know, the most strapping guy. It's not like he has all these natural weapons. You know, they kind of have to force the ball to dig, try to get the tight end involved, but it doesn't happen much. You know, you forget Mike Wallace and plays for them at times. I, I, I don't know, guys. I, I do think it'll be a factor. Uh, Jason, I, t- I said this to Tiki earlier. I'm curious if you have a different name. I think the player with the most to gain this entire weekend is Kirk Cousins. I mean, if he's able to come out and put up, you know, three bills, a couple of touchdowns, get to the second weekend, beat Aaron Rodgers head-to-head, it, it's going to be pretty hard to deny you know, his, his ascension and, and just his overall progress. you have a different name, or would you would you no, sign on that? I, I, no, I mean, I, I think that's certainly a, a, a good candidate for that. He's probably, well, I shouldn't say probably. I know they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna sign him long-term regardless, even if he struggles a little bit here. But, yeah, I mean, you, 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 you cap that sort of, uh, you really totally put your stamp on the franchise. You go out there and Al Tool and Aaron Rodgers. I, Brian Hoyer's another one. I mean, it's, it's no, not a lot of people are talking about Houston winning this game. Uh, maybe they won't, but he were to go out and win a playoff game as well. I mean, I know that they want to find their quarterback in the future, but the more playoff games they win, the more they start sliding down the draft board as well. Mm-hmm. And that I wonder true. if maybe he gets this too. This kid went ten and six in Cleveland. You just think about that. He went ten and six in games he played for the Cleveland Browns. Just compare that to their overall record over the last twenty years. It's kind of phenomenal. Well, I mean, is there a chance he takes on this uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick existence over the course of the next couple of years? Maybe. Kind of similar skill sets, more leadership than actual sheer talent. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're winning playoff games with a guy, I think you have to, you know, take it uh, as a little bit more viable uh, option beyond just, you know, a continual rent-as-you-go situation. Mm -hmm. And, and look, you've got Fitzpatrick. He's going to have to do a contract this year. Cousins is going to have to do a contract this year. 
you know, that Brian Hoyer, you know, could, could sit back and see where those things go, and maybe that brings those parties to the table. But, look, you know, let's see what happens in this playoff game. But that's a darn good Kansas City defense. If he was able to go out there and win that game, um, you know, maybe people would look at him a little differently. J- uh, excuse me, Jason, good spot. I know I'll see you on Sunday morning. Keep writing, and uh, we'll throw out the links for you, cbssports.com, NFL Today. He's Jason Lockett for Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. You got it. Thank you. All right, Jay.